for detail work, you want to have a scraper, a fine cut file, sandpaper and sandpaper blocks, rags, knee pads, and a vacuum. The scraper is used to remove any remaining finished stain and extra wood from corners and other areas where the edger can't reach, as well as to remove edger marks along walls. Scrape with the grain of the wood whenever possible, and if you need to scrape across the grain, do it very lightly to avoid ripping out the soft grain. A sharp scraper is the key in detail work. The tool should be doing the work for you as you feather on and off the floor, removing very thin, smooth shavings with each stroke. You want to resharpen your scraper often during use, but make sure not to do it over the floor. Steel shavings that fall on the floor will oxidize and discolor, showing up as a collection of tiny black dots. To remove edger and scraper marks, use a solid or dual density hand sanding block, with the corresponding fine grits of paper needed to remove the marks and which will blend with the planned final grit on your buffing operations. Two grits of abrasive can be used on a dual density block, a heavier grit on the hard side that will remove the edger or scraper marks easier, followed by a finer grit on the soft side to final detail the floor. Another option that many professionals use is a random orbit sander for the detail work around the edges and a random orbit delta sander for the corners. While it can take some experimenting to see what grits on these sanders will best match up with your buffer operation, these tools take a lot of the manual effort out of the all-important detail work. For rounded pieces of flooring, such as stair treads and bull nose transitions, a standard scraper can be used to carefully remove old stain and finish. Rounded bull nose scrapers are also available for this task. For final sanding on these areas, use the soft side of a sponge block to remove scraper marks and smooth out the surface. After you've scraped and sanded the detail areas, be sure to thoroughly vacuum all the shavings and dust off the floor. Now remove the sander, edger, and DCS unit from the job site and vacuum the entire floor using your Bona Backvac and 14-inch floor tool. For the blending process, you'll need a Bona Flexi Sand, multi-disc drive plate, quarter-inch intermediate pads, 5-inch sanding abrasives, a backvac, and disposable backvac bags. Pull out the cloth bag filter and filter cap. Inspect and clean the inside of the canister if necessary with a second vacuum, compressed air if you're outside, or a damp rag. Reinstall the filters, insert a new, clean, disposable paper bag, and secure the lid tightly. Make sure the hose, cuff connections, and power cord are in good condition, and that the machine is electrically grounded. Tilt the buffer back and attach the dust skirt. Attach the multi-disc and the abrasives you've chosen for the first pass. This choice will depend on the wood species and other factors that we'll discuss shortly. Plug the back vac into the available outlet on the flexi sand, attach the hose to the tube, and click the back vac switch to the on position. Begin using the flexi sand buffer by pulling up on the safety levers and then the operating levers. The back vac will power on when the flexi sand starts up. This is our final detailing before we apply stain and or sealer to the floor, so all sanding flaws must be removed during these steps. Since lighting conditions can vary widely from job to job, the light mounted on the flexi sand is a huge key to helping you see any remaining issues so that they can be removed with the buffer or other tools before your stain or sealer is applied. Choosing your final grit and paper type is largely a personal choice based on your experience but it's also what sets the professional apart from the cost-cutting novice. As a general rule, you want to start with the same grit you used for final sanding and edging. We recommend using Bona Blue for the first pass, followed by Bona 8100 for the final blend. For natural floors, finish with 120 or 150 grit. For staining, finish with 80, 100, or 120. And for oiled floors, finish with 120 or 150 grit. Intermediate pads for the multi-disc are available in quarter inch and half inch thicknesses. To provide the flattest surface, start without any intermediate pads using only the yellow multi-disc drive pads. If the machine starts to bounce, there are likely uneven areas on the floor, and using intermediate pads may help smooth them out. Quarter inch pads will work for smoothing out almost all uneven floors. 
but for hand scraped or distressed floors you may need to use half inch pads to better conform to the floor. It's important to remember that when using intermediate pads on the multi-disc, it's better to move faster several times across the floor as needed to minimize any possible dish out of the soft grain. The Bona Flexi Sand, when used with the DCS Backback, is an incredibly useful combination for the blending process. It's highly maneuverable, provides excellent dust containment, and there's only one cord to deal with. Even though they appear to be running flat, all buffers have a pressure point where they tend to cut more aggressively. This occurs in the upper right quarter of the drive plate between 12 and 3 o'clock. Finding the balance point where the unit stays in one place without great effort, also known as floating, will greatly reduce the possibility of swirl mark scratches. Additionally, understanding how to properly clock the buffer during the forward and return passes will also help to reduce any scratching. On the other hand, healing the buffer or pushing down on the handle while holding your position on the floor will cause a heavy grind in the right rear quarter of the machine. This can be a useful technique when trying to remove drum marks, stubborn edger marks, and so on. Start the buffer in a far corner or closet, away from direct sunlight if possible. This prevents any startup scratches from winding up in a highly visible area should they occur. Move the buffer in the same direction as the flooring, across and back in the same path, changing the angle of the buffer to cut on the forward pass and feather on the return pass. Using a multi-disc in a smooth floating technique greatly reduces the need for clocking when compared to a standard 16-inch rotary drive plate. After a full pass, move over half the width of your buffer and start your next pass, overlapping your previous pass by 50%. A common mistake is to buff around the sides of the room first, then move back into the field. This will usually cause a picture frame effect, especially on the butt end walls where the buffer was forced across the grain. Only operate the buffer in the same direction as the flooring. Any movement cross grain will likely result in a shadow when stain, sealer, and finish are applied. If a room is large enough to require an abrasive change partway through buffing, start with the new abrasive discs on one side of the room and work toward the center. Stop near the middle of the room and move to the other side. Change your discs and work back toward the middle. This way, used meets up with used. If you change to a new abrasive in the middle of the room, a different color or scratch pattern is likely to show up. Depending on the job, wood species, and other factors, it may be necessary to use several abrasive grits in sequence on the buffer, just as we did with the sander and edger. For example, for a natural finish, if our final sand was done with 100 grit, we would buff first with 100, then a 150. We can't jump straight to the 150 because it wouldn't blend the 100 grit sander and edger scratch pattern. During the buffing phase, very fine wood dust is created and packed into the seams and soft grain areas like concrete. At this point, many contractors will vacuum the floor and move on to the staining or sealing stage. The problem with this is that the majority of fine dust is still there, even after vacuuming. When finishes soak in, the areas where that dust resides will swell and pop out, creating a rough and sometimes unsightly surface known as grain rays. Plain vacuuming just doesn't work that well. We have a much better way to make sure you're creating the cleanest, smoothest floors possible. Named after the Tampico plant that it's made from, the Tampico brush is stiff enough to scrub the fine dust out of the floor, but soft enough not to scratch the wood. It does an exceptional job of removing fine dust from the soft grain and seams, nearly eliminating grain rays and other first coat issues. To ensure you're getting the floor as clean as possible, first vacuum the outside of the buffer. Then, tilt it back and remove and clean off the multi-disc. Thoroughly clean the inside of the buffer chassis and the dust skirt. Attach the Tampico brush and tilt the machine back up. Wipe off the power cable with a damp rag since it has probably picked up dust during buffing due to static buildup. Also, wipe or vacuum down the back vac if necessary and replace the bag as needed. Using the buffer with the back vac, make sure the dust skirt is in place and lowered all the way to the floor. Start your Tampico cleaning at the far wall and move toward your exit, moving back and forth in the direction of the flooring 
and overlapping each pass by 50%. Take extra care not to track any dust or debris on clean areas with dirty shoes or the power cord. Since the Tampico brush won't reach certain areas, use a 14-inch horsehair brush with the back vac for edges and corners. Pay close attention to detail areas utilizing the small round brush and crevice tool to remove any remaining dust and debris. At this point, some contractors choose to vacuum the entire floor once more, but we've found that using the Tampico brush eliminates the need for this step. Finally, tack the floor with a bona mop and a tacking pad mop cover. Due to its electrostatic properties, the fine cut pile on the tacking pad does a much better job of dry tacking than the twist pile on the bona cleaning pad. Placing walk-off mats or folded bath towels at all entrances will help to keep any unwanted debris or dust off your clean floor. Additionally, wearing surgical booties can be very helpful from this point on to prevent any contamination from work shoes and boots.